We're back, baby. From a different angle, the camera's now mounted on top of the computer, and more importantly, Bitcoin doing something really, really interesting as far as long-term does go here as the daily time frame working on a nice silver cross, which, if history is anything to go off of, does give it a nice higher probability of a nice upside continuation move from here, amongst other things as well. Anyways, other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Air Crown Crypto Channel. It's a nice little Monday. It's a new week. It's a new week. It's a new week, baby and all sorts of new things going on in the geopolitical sphere as well. I'm gonna get into that on this video. This video is focused on cryptocurrency, magic, internet money, analysis. So let's just jump into it right here. All right, first things first, what is a silver cross? Silver cross is, in this case, the yellow 21 exponential moon average crossing the upside of the green 55 exponential moon average. Um, I actually favor the silver cross much more than pretty much any other cross, especially the fucking golden cross, which seems to get a lot of the uh, love, as as does the death cross. Um, but the silver cross, in my experience, um, does work incredibly well for, you know, more strong trends emerging kind of from the point of it actually happening, um, particularly particularly when it's on the side on the same side of the current macro direction. So when I say the, the 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 same side of the current macro direction, I mean the overall direction of the market um, kind of over the long term if you will. So in this case we can see that when the lower period crossed the upside or sorry, when the lower period crossed the upside of the higher period, it's just my brain's not working this morning, um, <laughs> then that does set in a more bullish tone. So I've highlighted the upside crosses here. I've gone over the past uh, four, four years here of, uh, of history, or five years actually, um, just for the last 10 crosses that we can kind of fit onto this screen. And as you can see, many have been uh, great successes. Some of them have been great failures. I would, I would essentially call them traps. Um, for example, if I'm going to be going off of uh, what would be considered a trap, this would certainly be one example right here in March of 2022, where Bitcoin did you know, actually continue on with that rally a little bit more before inevitably coming all the way down um, and putting in lows you know, thus far in uh, the, you know, the team. For, uh, for, for, you know, for price action. More importantly with this, what I would say is that the overall trend here was obviously to the downside. When we go off the weekly trend, the trend was to the downside. Um, so that was a good indication that this one probably wasn't going to work out all that well. And same thing with this small trap right here. Weekly trend to the downside, and what do you know, another trap move. Now, the weekly trend shifted in early 2023, and at that point, we saw the equal but opposite behavior of the silver cross after that point, where this silver cross over here, you know, begot this amazing price action, um, you know, basically an 80% move for the course of three months, or 91 days in this case, and then got a silver cross to the downside right here. But just as we went over before, the weekly trend now to the upside does imply that silver cross is to the downside, not going to be great. And in this case, this was a fucking terrible one, obviously. In fact, I mean, it, it, it's more of an indication that you're probably in a potential opportunity zone to buy. Um, but uh, but then again, you know, did get another silver cross more recently in June off of, uh, I don't know, one of the BlackRock news or whatever the hell. Um, and this one did not really get any sort of major continuation yet. It's slightly traded higher from where the cross actually happened. Um, but this would, in my opinion, be considered a failure here. So that was included in the failure column, even though the weekly trend is still to the upside. So obviously, you know, these things do, ch you know, they're, they're, they're not hard rules, but they give you a higher probability. Um, but what's interesting is that of the last 10 silver crosses to the upside, three of them have been failures as we just went over and you just actually saw those three. <laughs> you just saw those three. Um, and, uh, and so two of those coming in, you know, weekly downtrends for the rest of them uh, was in the context of weekly uptrends. Um, and of course, this one that we saw more recently to the downside right here, you know, not the greatest timer uh, in this case. Um, in fact, would have basically sold very close to the low. Yeah, there was a slight amount of continuation lower um, about a month later, but it was not uh, anything significant as far as I'm concerned. And what do you know? As of uh, a few days ago, Silver Cross once again happening to the upside right here, and the weekly trend is seemingly putting in a higher low at the same time. Um, especially on the higher term time frame, so we can actually get this damn chart to load. That'd be amazing. Yeah, as you can see right here, you know, the price action is actually starting to look a little bit more constructive within this region as it does reclaim all major moving averages on a weekly time frame as well, um, sustaining the silver cross that actually began on the weekly uh, back on over in June. So going back to the daily here, which is the focus of today, um, not all silver crosses are equal, obviously. If we go ahead and uh, look at the past um, 10 ones from the past four years, you can see that some of them led on to like, you know, 
humongous runs, basically humongous runs. Um, like I'm talking about this run started over here in October, 2020, where Bitcoin went all the way from, you know, 11,000 to 60,000 plus. Right. Um, and then again, you know, we saw a couple of great ones over here, um, but they're not that, you know, they're not the same of the same type. You know, this was like a 500% move. This was also a, I would say a pretty decent move, but that's a 40% move. And again, same thing over here, but I would still consider these uh, successes. You know, I mean, this one did lead on to new all time highs and 40% move um, is in most markets really fucking good. <laughs> really, really good. Uh, in cryptocurrency land, people expect many thousand X's, but, uh, but fair enough, you know, that's just not really, I, I think reasonable, um, especially for Bitcoin anymore. For other, you know, nameless and newer cryptocurrencies, perhaps yeah, um, but that's not the game that we're playing right here. Anyways, uh, so my point is, is that, um, you know, generally speaking, seeing as this one did just start over here and the weekly trend is still to the upside and the weekly uh, and the weekly time frame is still operating above all major moving averages after, you know, putting in a base here basically since August. So you got August, September, and now about a couple weeks in, or a week, week and a half into October. Okay, you know, things are looking more and more constructive. And I would say that that's, again, going to give it a higher probability of upside continuation here. Um, just kind of going over the numbers, seven out of 10 of the past four years were successes, three out of 10 were traps. Um, anyways, moving on now, let's go into, actually, let me bring up my notes. Um, I did want to bring back this chart over here. This is the, oh, actually, before we get into that, I want to bring up this chart right here. Um, one, Bitcoin is still finding its nice current upside resilience region at about 28,000 bucks. That's where the white 200 cent moon average is. So it does seem like it is kind of respecting that. Um, again, if Bitcoin starts to really close above that region, I'd really be looking for this cross to uh, play out in spectacular fashion. On top of that, the daily jewel, whoops, the daily Daily Jewel is really close to getting a continuation signal here. Really, 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 really close. Obviously, we'd like to see this one turn that light blue cyan color as well to fully confirm that, but it is already supported by DMI and operating above the slower moving oscillator in this case. So, you know, if we start to see that one fire off maybe tonight or tomorrow, that'd be a damn good indication, uh, maybe an earlier warning that this one will continue. Um, anyways, moving on now, uh, let's go over here. Um, this is a chart that we haven't visited in a while now. It's a two day time frame volatility versus stochastic momentum signature. And uh, what do you know? The two day time frame volatility is actually raising up here. It's not doing anything like super interesting as of right now, as far as price action goes. But in this case, the statistics do still apply, of course. And we can see that the two-day time frame stochastic oscillator uh, remains with this upside momentum as long as Bitcoin is above 27750 which, by the way, this time frame is actually closing tonight. So that 27,750 uh, pivot is actually rather close to current price action. So we would expect that's, that if this one is going, to is going to continue to the upside, that Bitcoin would you know remain above that pivot, like with flying colors today, <laughs> is what you would expect. And that also implied that there's you know going to be a breakage of the 200 simple. Now, of course, this has to be combined with the geopolitical situation going on as of right now in the Middle East, and well. The problem with that is, is that typically those sort of events do lead to volatility uh, in the more near term to the downside, followed by, you know, upside after that. Um, but uh, so, you know, putting two to do uh, two and two together, you know, do we get a, a more corrected pullback here first? Definitely possible. Um, where would I start to reimagine the prior analysis, or not necessarily reimagine it, but say that it's invalidated, as that's a more accurate term? Um, well, in this case, we can see that uh, if you are going off the silver cross and you're just going off this consolidation right here, it's very obvious that the 27,200 ish region is the area that Bitcoin is catching a little bit of a bid at thus far, meaning that if Bitcoin pops back down below there, I would expect the same thing as before Bitcoin coming back down to at least low 26 probably more like, you know, mid 25s or upper 25s. And that would be actually the next sort of basin area. I still would not necessarily be looking for Bitcoin to break down significantly. The only time or the only way that I'd really be looking for Bitcoin to break down significantly from here is if it essentially takes out the September low. Below there, yeah, big fucking problems. Big fucking problems <laughs> for, for the blue laws, at least. Um, for the barrows, great, great times indeed. Anyways, uh, moving on now, we can go into the HPDR ranges. And what do you know? It lines up on the four hour almost precisely with what we're looking at on the daily time frame, which is also a good indication that these areas are very, very important to be aware of. Uh, the current average of the range is coming in just above 28,000 bucks. Current low side of the range is coming in, where do you know? 27,200. So, um, you know, could a four hour time frame be used to kind of uh, indicate an earlier break? break? Maybe yes. Maybe yes. In fact, I'd say probably yes. Um, as, uh, as I bring up my indicators right here, but I'm not really seeing anything that's like of significant 
interest, maybe another trend line test of this on the HPDRO, which by the way, Caretaker is looking to release relatively soon, which is really, really cool. Um, and we're just kind of testing them out right now in real time and making sure that everything's, uh, everything is nice and tight, tight like a tiger. Uh, but, uh, but so far so good. And this is this HPDRO especially is uh, one of my favorite ones. Um, it's got a few other ones as well that are super cool, but, uh, still, I, I think I need to spend more time with them, uh, personally. Anyways, um, we can now move on into stochastic momentum over here, starting off with the weekly time frame. Um, we can see that the weekly is going to continue with that upside momentum as long as Bitcoin is closed above 25,870 on CME. So looking likely, um, spot price action, I imagine is, yeah, basically the same. Um, so not really much to update there or, or differentiate between there. Uh, but going over to the five day time frame. Also on CME, freshly crossing up. So now keep in mind, CME was not crossed up as was spot price action. Um, uh, so this is a little bit of a newer development and remains the upset as long as CME is above 26,000 bucks closing tomorrow night. Yeah, to closing tomorrow night, just to be sure. Um, two day time frame also remains the upset as long as Bitcoin is above 26,300 uh, basically. Daily time frame will actually be headed down below 28.2 and 12 hour and as we go lower i think are looking more corrective here 12 hour looks 28 uh 28 000 pivot six hour time frame is actually up above 27.6 but i think that's the odd man out no four hours also above 27.6 and hourly is down yeah down below 28 too so i'm not really getting too much from those medium and lower term time frames you know probably gonna be some ebbs and flows there as there typically are um you know, but even if I'm looking at a four hour time frame right here, Bitcoin is seemingly putting in a slew of higher lows. So I suspect that we'll get actual direction around the time that US markets opens today on Monday. Um, between Monday and Tuesday are gonna be the big ones. Um, then we can actually revisit those uh, Bitcoin daily stats. I think, uh, again, Tuesday is the most bullish day. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday is the most bullish day or most likely to be, or no, it is Tuesday. Tuesday is the most likely to be bullish. So, you know, if we are going to see big upside movements, probably happens Tuesday. If Bitcoin's going to, you know, maybe flounder around here, probably, probably Monday, maybe with a spike to the downside in the interim. Um, anyways, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this video. I liked, I'd like to revisit this one um, as we kind of update this long form of analysis um, over time, just kind of looking around here, just seeing what, what, else, is, uh, what else is going on. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, I, do, I also do want to re, um, reignite, no, re-talk about retard no <laughs> um, i am uh no just looking at dixie right here uh, again um the reversal does look well real for now <laughs> so so you know we'll come back to that one tomorrow um i expect that we're going to get a lot of clarity around the time that u.s markets open until then it's kind of iffy here so yep i'll be uh i'll be sounding off on that note take care much love and see you hopefully soon